lot of moving parts in this. So let me, really, this is meant to give some, some folks an update um, on, you know, where Oklahoma is from a coaching search perspective, give an update on, you know, kind of how all of this transpired, um, give an update just in terms of what coaches that I believe that either have already left with, with Riley and, and are going to leave with Riley and what the impact of this, all of this is on the immediate future next year. So let's, let's start with kind of some of the, and then obviously I'll take your questions and your thoughts. Um, you know, who do you guys think will be the next coach? Um, who do you, uh, who do you think, what do you think will happen? So let's, let's start with really kind of talking about how, how all of this um, transpired, I think. So from some of the information that I gathered and some of the information is um, behind some paywalls and some of it has been released and some of it has not. So just protecting some of those sites and protecting, you know, some, some of those, you know, some of those people that are doing that business, I'm not going to share, you know, completely everything, but from, from what I've, what I'm gathering throughout this year, uh, Oklahoma, Joe Castiglione has been working with Lincoln, had, had been working with Lincoln Riley on a contract extension. I think there's some things that, I, I think there's some things that Lincoln Riley had asked for in terms of, you know, some of insurances from, um, you know, kind of from the football, the athletic program, uh, j- just, uh, just, to, just in terms of what he felt like, um, what he felt like needed to happen for Oklahoma to be competitive in the SEC. So I think part of it has to do with the compliance group. I've said this on here before. I think the Oklahoma compliance group is probably um, a little bit more harsh than what what's happening in the SEC. I think there's several examples. Um, Oklahoma has lost a couple of high profile recruits within you know within the, the last couple of days, and I think we all know the reason reason why that is. So that's one. Um, I think you know. I, I think just in general, Riley wasn't incredibly excited about um, going to the SEC. You know, I don't think he was part of that discussion, nor should he have been. But I think just at the end of the day, he wasn't incredibly excited about going to the SEC. I think um, you know. I think there was some you know there was some strong um belief that maybe Riley felt like Oklahoma wasn't really at this juncture doing everything that they needed to do to be um to be competitive in in the SEC so I think that's part of it um but from everything that I heard um everything that that I know Castiglione and Harris were were certainly listening to him and felt like you know they had a plan moving forward that would work towards um, exactly what they needed to do to be what some of um, Riley's demands were. So, um, so I, I think the LSU thing was something that they knew about, um, something that they were aware of. But at the end of the day, didn't really think that that was a big, um, a big factor. And um, you know, really felt strongly about, you know, being able to work this out and Riley obviously signing a, a contract extension and, and, and going forward. So I think where the rubber meets the road, and, and just so you guys know, I think Bob Stoops has been very, very much involved in this for a big a big part of this over the last few weeks, months, so to speak. Um, so I think, you know, they, they felt comfortable where, where, with where Oklahoma was, where – um, where Lincoln Riley was, and then I think this Thanksgiving weekend happened. So sometime in between Thursday and Saturday, I think the powers that be, meaning Bob Stoops, Joe Harris, um, and Joe Castiglione, kind of got wind on this USC thing. Um, and then by the time they got wind of it, it was too late. I think you know Riley had already made up his mind; he was going there. Um, you know, he was going there, and you know. I, I don't know about you guys, but I f- it, it feels a level of hurt, I think, for me. I think just it, it feels like Oklahoma just went on probation for two years based on what um, the decision that he made. And, and certainly you can't you can't um, 
if his decision is, is truly for a financial purpose, I get that and not really wanting to, um, you know, not really wanting to um, compete in the SEC. I think that's one thing um, as well. I think that's part of it. So um, I think the money was is, is helpful. I think, you know, he felt like USC was going to do everything that they could um, to to get them back to a, to a power. So it is what it is. I think, you know, now moving forward, I feel, like I said, feel like it was almost like Oklahoma got hit with probation last night. So 